feel like you've had one yet, or are you still looking for it? I'm still looking for it. That's James, and I'm Jared. And tonight, we're talking with the newsmakers and news reporters with opinions, perspective, and predictions. This is 10 Before Tip. Coming up, Howard Beck tells us just how many the beard will drop at the world's most famous. Two weeks and a day, trade rumors swirling. Leading up to February 7th trade deadline, we've got the latest on AD's short-term future with an injury update. Plus, we'll go live to Memphis to examine where Conley and Gasol could wind up. 10-game Wednesday, Mark, he won in Philly against the Spurs. Corey Brewer gets the start with Jimmy Butler out for a second straight game with a sprained wrist. Ben Simmons battling an upper respiratory infection will start. And we'll have more coming up on Joel Embiid's status later in the show. Celtics without Kyrie and Horford against the Cavs. And for the fourth straight game, load management is the reason given for Kawhi not playing as the Raptors have a huge game against the Pacers. Thanks for joining us as we discuss the biggest stories of the day and set the table for the night in the NBA. It's an action-packed 30 minutes. 10 before tip number two is all about number 21. James Harden with an opportunity to extend his streak to 21 consecutive games, scoring at least 30 points. While Harden has been on a scoring tear, his team, eh, not so much. Houston just 5-5 five and five over its last 10. Tonight at MSG against the team with the second worst record in basketball, Harden looks to not only turn things around for the Rockets, but also check a box on the old bucket list, joining Select Company to win over the Garden crowd by putting on a spectacular Broadway show. It's what's happening right now. Luisa to Bryant, Bryant inside for the slam. Kobe Bryant electrifying. We have one of the greatest individual performances ever here at Madison Square Garden. LeBron James putting on a show here at the Garden. James, another three. It's good. LeBron James just torching the Knicks. He's got now an NBA season high 52. That guy is hot. Curry for three. Wow! Unbelievable. Making it rain in New York. What a show by Steph Curry. Chance of defense from the Garden crowd. Andre the has got to take a shot. Two seconds. Step back jumper. Got it! Got it! Got it! Andre the Bottom! It's a buzzer! <laughs> Bam! Well, joining us as he does each and every Wednesday, the senior NBA writer for Bleacher Report, Howard Beck, back at his home office tonight in New York City, where James Harden will be tonight. Beck, over under 50 for Harden at the world's most famous. Well, first of all, I just appreciated that little trip down memory lane. I was uh, there for a few of those uh, storied performances you all just showed. Um, I don't think we're going to see history made here tonight only because... I don't know that James Harden's going to be playing all four quarters. This could be a blowout very early. Uh, the Knicks obviously not winning much, not competing very hard, and their defense ranks among the worst in the NBA, whether it's overall defensive efficiency, whether it's three-pointers allowed, three-point percentage allowed, points in the paint allowed. Uh, the Rockets, depending on, on how Harden is looking early, might just put this one away long before he can ever approach, say, 50. But they have given up... Uh, Four 40-point games this season, the Knicks, including two at the Garden. So uh, anything's possible. Well, we'll be live looking this game throughout the night on Crunch Time starting at 9 o'clock Eastern tonight where we show you the biggest moments tonight as they happen live. Howard, for you, as impressive as Harden has been as an individual, his team has struggled, clearly depleted by injury and a lack of talent around Harden. I get he may not have any other options but to do this, but... Is it kind of devaluing what he's doing because of how he's doing it and the team not winning? No, I mean, I, listen, the, the numbers are what they are. And the streak is incredible no matter what the circumstances are. You do it out of necessity. You do it just because you're on uh, a, a great streak. You do it for whatever reason. These don't come about very often in the NBA. And he is doing it all out of necessity. That they're not winning uh, more recently uh, puts a, a little bit of a damper on it, but let's face it, without this streak, the Rockets aren't even back in the playoff picture. Remember, this is a team that was really bad uh, for the first, you know, four, six, seven weeks of the season, and Harden's streak following Chris Paul's injury is what saved their season. Um, but that said, it you know, you always had to figure there was going to be some limits on this. How far can Harden push it? How many nights in a row can he do this? Uh, without any help and look they're starting to get a little healthier in places they're getting some guys back obviously they need capella they need chris paul but eventually they're going to need 
a full compliment out there. I don't you think you can count on the idea of Harden just scoring 30, 40 every night for the rest of the season. I don't think that's sustainable. Rockets right now in the fifth spot, the West, by the end of the night, could find themselves flip-flopping with the Spurs into the sixth spot. More from Howard Beck in a moment. On to 10 before tip number three. It's what's buzzing today around the NBA. It's uh, where we're at, I guess, you know, and, uh, it's part of the business. You know, it's, it's not like we've been traded yet or anything like that. It's um, part of it, and, you know, we knew the way things have been going the last few weeks that anything, anything can happen. It doesn't to change, is it? There's nothing to change to me. So, you know, my relationship with the Grizzlies might change, but my relationship with Memphis won't. We don't want none of that smoke. No, no, literally, we don't want any of that smoke in FedEx Forum. Bit of a scare about an hour ago where FedEx Forum had to be evacuated. David Cobb having to tweet out that the Grizzlies try to trade Mike Conley and Marcus Gasol, and the locker room literally catches fire. Yeah, the sauna, bit of a problem there. Let's go to David Cobb, who's covering the Grizzlies tonight. David, can you see us through the smoke? There he is from the commercial appeal covering the Grizzlies here. First of all, everybody safe and sound tonight for the Grizzlies? Nobody was hurt in this fire. Uh, the entire arena was evacuated about three hours before tip. So naturally, you start to wonder, is this even game even going to go on as scheduled? But we've been assured that it is. The doors will open a little bit later than usual to the public. But as of now, it's all systems go for 7 p.m. Right. So we'll start 7 p.m. local, 8 o'clock Eastern. Another game will be live looking tonight on Crunch Time starting at 9 o'clock Eastern. So let's go to the other news item of the day. Marcus all a bit emotional. Right, talking about the potential end or the days coming to an end of him being a Grizzly. How, how realistic is the report we heard last night from ESPN that the Grizzlies are, for the first time, considering listening to offers that they'll actually act on one of those offers? Yeah, it's definitely realistic that they're going to listen. Uh, how realistic it is that they're going to act, I'm not sure because I've outlined these scenarios in some of my work, and uh, there's really not a whole lot of harm in waiting until the summer. In fact, uh, they would have the benefit this summer of knowing if and where they're going to pick in this year's draft, uh, which would be a, a good thing to know before you make a franchise-altering decision, such as parting with uh, Mike Conley, Mark Gasol, or both of them. So uh, they're definitely, I think, more in a listening phase right now, which in and of itself is certainly newsworthy given what those guys have meant to this team in the city. But uh, I don't think that it's at any level of certainty right now that they're actually going to deal them before the deadline. We heard the owner in the offseason talk about 50 wins in the playoffs, and the team races off to a great 12-5 and five start. Has the team officially waved the white flag on making another playoff run? Is there any chance they could add some pieces? No, I think they were the, the white flag was waved when this signal went out you know, yesterday that they're going to listen to to trade uh, offers for those guys. And if you watch the, the ML King uh, game on Monday when they played the Anthony davis list Pelicans and, and lost by 20 at home on a day that means a lot to this city when the arena was packed, uh, that was sort of the death knell the death knell on the grit and grind Mike Conley, Mark Gasol era in a lot of ways. And it's really hard to see them resurrecting that unless they luck out with a, a Zion Williamson or something and, and compare him and Jaron Jackson with uh, Conley and Gasol and, and sort of phase them out that way. But even that, the, the odds of that happening are so far-fetched now that it kind of does feel like this is the end. Maybe they were doing some sort of rain dance in the locker room which caused the fire to try and get that first overall pick. But no, seriously, only 30 seconds here, David. I know this is a complicated question to ask you with that time limit, but do you believe with how complicated it will be for different reasons to trade both of these guys that either one of them will get the sign off from the front office on where they ultimately go? You know, I think that these guys, if they had it their way, they wouldn't necessarily even want to be traded. Uh, so I think the front office is going to ship them where they get the, the best deal. Uh, and it's got to reach a, a certain threshold. I think you need at least one future-oriented asset for each guy. Uh, when they traded Powell a decade ago, they got uh, two first-rounders and Mark in the deal. You're not going to get that for either of these guys because these guys are over 30. They're on huge contracts. You want at least one future-oriented asset for each, whether that be a promising young player or a first-round pick. David Cobb from the Commercial Appeal. Glad you're safe. Enjoy covering the Grizzlies tonight against Charlotte on League Pass. Thanks a lot for joining us. Let's talk more about potential trade scenarios as we bring back in Howard Beck at Bleacher Report. All right, Beck, we, we look at Gasol's contract. The potential of making around $26 million in a player option next year makes his deal complicated. 
Conley making over $30 million for the next several years makes his deal complicated to get done. Do you see any scenario where one or both of these guys does get traded to, and where would that be? Well, we're a long way from that happening. I mean, it sounds like the, uh, the the doors just swung open on this potential shopping spree for the league. And look, both of these guys could help teams. There's no question. You can go down and, and you can find plenty of teams that could use a Marcus Gasol or a Mike Conley. But you mentioned the contract issues. That's part of it. Their age could be part of it, especially in Gasol's case. And so, you know, what what's worth it to the Grizzlies? When you're giving up basically the symbols of your franchise, an era, a, a certain feeling, a sentimentality, that connection that you've had with the community, with the fans, you, you're, you're trading more than just the player at that point. And so, you know, a couple of second round picks, even though that could help you down the road, eh, that's not going to do it. You know, they've got to be not blown away, but they've got to be incentivized to make these moves, set themselves up for a rebuild, but also, you know, make it clear that you're not just giving up uh, these important players without getting something that gives the fans some kind of future hope. So it, it, it's a complicated equation. In terms of teams, I mean, look, um, you can go down the list. You know, uh, the Raptors could certainly use Marcus Gasol, even if they get Valanciunas back. I'm not sure that, that he's the guy that they want to keep their long term. I could see Gasol fitting with Toronto. I could see him fitting with Washington, which obviously has a problem at center and has, you know, certainly is just trying to, to stay in the playoff hunt in the East. Um, Marcus Gasol has always struck me as the perfect spur. So has Mike Conley, actually, for that matter. Uh, they've already got one Gasol, why not two? Um, I mean, there's there are any number of teams. Where the realistic deals actually lie, who has the assets to pull it off, what's the right configuration, that's a lot, much, uh, you know, much more difficult question. All right, while we're still on Anthony Davis trade watch, we did receive some news tonight from Anthony Davis's agent, Rich Paul of Clutch Sports, saying that the hand specialist that Anthony Davis went to go see once feared he could miss up to a month of action with the injury is now only one to two weeks. Davis will be reevaluated again later this week on Friday. So how does this injury and how does the uncertain future of Anthony Davis in New Orleans maybe affect what teams are willing to offer for the likes of Conley and Gasol? I'm not sure there's a direct line, Jared, between these situations. I mean, listen, if Anthony Davis were out for weeks, as we originally thought might be the case, then the Pelican season is all but cooked, and it certainly takes them out of any possible discussions. But I think, you know, New Orleans is actually a really interesting potential landing spot for Mike Conley. Again, don't know if they can pull it off. Don't know if they have the goods to make a deal with Memphis and don't know if that's the deal that they want to make, especially not knowing for sure if Anthony Davis is going to stay. But getting a strong point guard to put in the backcourt next to Drew Holiday and having those two with Anthony Davis, with a supposed, you know, presumably Miritich still being there, Randall, now you've got uh, the kind of roster that can still make a run at the playoffs once Anthony Davis is healthy and maybe convince him to stay long term. But the Pelicans are kind of stuck in between uh, these two situations here where they don't know for sure that they'll get a commitment from Anthony Davis on July 1st. And so are you planning for to do, are you are you all in planning for him to stay or are you still hedging bets? Not sure what you should give up in a potential deal for, say, a Mike Conley. All right, Howard Beck will check back in with you in a bit. When we return on 10 Before Tip, we go live to Miami where Hassan Whiteside and company trying to bounce back from a loss. We'll get you set for all of that, plus a big night here on NBA TV. Crunch time comes your way at 9 o'clock Eastern.